100 years ago this week, Russia's imperial family, the Romanovs, were murdered by the Bolsheviks, the country's Marxist revolutionaries. Today, Russia has a leader who many believe is positioning himself as a new kind of czar. Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. Russia's president has adopted some of the trappings of an imperial ruler. But he also admires the country's Soviet past. So this anniversary is a tricky moment for the president. July 1918. A civil war raged across Russia's vast lands between Bolshevik forces led by Lenin and the White Army loyal to Tsar Nicholas II. The Bolsheviks had seized power eight months previously, established a socialist workers' republic, and soon after had imprisoned Nicholas and his family in the city of Yekaterinburg. Then, on the night of July 16th, the Bolsheviks did the unthinkable. The Bolsheviks decided to shoot Emperor Nicholas II with his wife and all his family in the basement of the so-called Ipatyev house in the city. There were many bullets. It was a very violent and horrifying shooting. Nicholas, his wife Alexandra, their five children and servants were dumped in unmarked graves. The news would send shockwaves around the world. Today, Russia is ruled by a modern-day autocrat, Vladimir Putin. Putin believes in statehood, but it can be embodied only in the person of the leader of the monarch. That's the symbol, the power and the embodiment of the state. Real power rests with Mr. Putin, while the Duma, Russia's parliament, like Nicholas's parliament in the early 1900s, wields little real authority. And like Russia's czars, Mr. Putin has tried to maintain his grip on power through political repression at home and military conflict abroad in both Ukraine and Syria. The Romanov czars were closely supported by the Russian Orthodox Church. Mr. Putin has worked to gain their support too. В постсоветской России церковь играет ключевую роль в жизни общества, ключевую с точки зрения формирования национальной идентичности. И чтобы государство чувствовало себя легитимным, государству и его руководителям нужно в некотором роде, даже несмотря на то, что государство светское, нужно благословение церкви. But the centenary of the Romanov murders poses a challenge for Mr. Putin. The dilemma facing Vladimir Putin uh, is to navigate between strongly condemning the act of murder of the last emperor and his family, and on the other side, not condemning the regime and the political system which was established after the revolution by the people who actually killed the Tsar. Russia's president has tried to sidestep the barbarity of the Romanov murders to present a revisionist version of modern Russian history. Putin is bent on restoring the great country, he has the vision of the great Russia. You can rename the state and the position of authority, but it is still, for him, the same centralized state with the all-powerful autocrat at the helm of it. Mr. Putin isn't the first president to grapple with the legacy of the Romanovs. In 1998, the remains of Tsar Nicholas and his family were identified. Then, President Boris Yeltsin used the Tsar's reburial to acknowledge that the murders were a crime and to break away from Russia's Soviet past. Борис Ельцин пытался строить демократическое государство. Это была попытка, попытка выбора демократического пути. Но потом, собственно, Ельцин ушел с исторической сцены. И при Путине государство стало разворачиваться от демократии к автократии. Поскольку государство пытается стать империей, то церковь, соответственно, чтобы соответствовать государству, становится церковью империи. In Mr. Putin, the church's hierarchy has found an ally who celebrates Russia's imperial past. 
while the 65-year-old president has used the church's support to bolster his image as Russia's anointed savior. Mr. Putin remains popular in part because he has muzzled any real political opposition. Like the Tsars, he resists calls for democratic reform. Putin believes that Russian people want strong leader and don't want uh, the mess of the democratic politics. The Russian president's grip on power remains strong. But as Russian history has shown, the country's systems of government can rise and fall in unpredictable ways.